Coming up, State of Business, sponsored by Star Star Seattle. IWS Aviation. Very good evening and a warm welcome to State of Business on our television. I'm Mariam Vijayaratna. Let's have a look at the headlines first. Second stakeholder enters the full market. Maldives and Sri Lanka signs an MOU to strengthen cooperation. News in detail. The Power and Energy Ministry signed an agreement with US-based RM Parks ensuring a long-term contract for the importation, storage, distribution and sale of petroleum products in the country. The agreement was signed yesterday at the Presidential Secretariat in the presence of President Ranil Vikramasinghe. RM Parks, in collaboration with Shell, aims to commence operations in Sri Lanka within 45 days after the issuance of the license. RM Parks will be the fourth supplier to enter the domestic market and will operate under the Shell branding. The 20-year agreement to import, distribute and sell petroleum products will be carried out through 154 stations allocated from Ceylon Petroleum Corporation. The approval was also granted for 50 new fuel stations to be established countrywide. According to the Power and Energy Minister, RM Parks will upgrade the fuel stations with new automated dispensers, electric charge stations, mini markets and cafes. The agreement was signed by RM Parks Vice President and Power and Energy Ministry Secretary Mapa Patirana in the presence of many dignitaries. The Cabinet on 27 June 2022 approved to open up the fuel retail market and the rationale was new players will be required to import fuel and sell without foreign exchange from local banks. Thereafter, the Cabinet on 27 March this year approved a strategic move to open up the fuel retailing market further with a grant of a 20-year license to three more global players from China, the US and Australia. Government plans to expand the general wastewater treatment plant at Horana Export Processing Zone. Cabinet spokesperson and Minister Bandulugunu Wardana said this at the post-cabinet media briefing recently. The Cabinet of Ministers cleared the proposal by the President in his capacity as the Investment Promotion Minister to expand the general wastewater treatment plant at the Horana Export Processing Zone. Cabinet spokesperson Bandulugunu Wardana said that the project will be implementing using 1,100 million rupees from the funds approved by the Board of Directors of the Board of Investment. The current general wastewater treatment facility at the Horana EPZ does not have enough containment capacity. As a result, the public faces restrictions when releasing wastewater to the adjacent canals. The BOI was requested by the local government institutions to accelerate the construction of the facility. Requests were put forward to build it with a capacity of 2,000 cubic meters per day under the expansion project of the General Wastewater Refinery in the Horana EPZ. Maldives and Sri Lanka signed a memorandum of understanding in the areas of cultural cooperation, health cooperation and the establishment of the Maldives Cultural Centre in Sri Lanka. The MOU was signed concluding the fourth session of Sri Lanka Maldives Joint Commission held on the 7th of this month at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Colombo. The Joint Commission, co-chaired by Foreign Minister Ali Sabri and Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid of Maldives. The Commission focused on further expanding bilateral cooperation in trade and investment, tourism, employment, fisheries, education, health and cultural cooperation between the two countries. Both sides agreed to intensify their efforts to bolster engagement with a view to enhancing cooperation in these areas. Both countries recognized the importance of implementation of the existing agreements and agreed to pursue new agreements. In order to facilitate implementation of agreed cooperation, both sides also decided to set up working groups in the areas of trade, fisheries, tourism and health. The Maldivian delegation vowed to promote Sri Lanka as a viable education hub among Maldivian students. 
Sri Lanka expressed its willingness to complete the required due procedures in facilitating the issuance of visas for students under 18 years of age on concessionary and reciprocal basis. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after this short commercial break. Welcome back after the break. The Welfare Benefits Board announces that us Vesuma will increase coverage of the poor by 22% and that it has adopted a multidimensional deprivation test in determining the poor. The chairman, B. Vijayaratna, stated this at the Social Safety Nets and State of Poverty in Sri Lanka panel discussion held in Colombo on Wednesday. Earlier, we had concentrated on identifying the poor people on means test, that means consumption, expenditure, or income. In addition to that criteria, uh, we, with the lessons learned from the globe, we I decided to go for the, the multidimensional depreciation test. What is the difference between the, the, the type of that uh, global accepted or emulating multidimensional one and our one is that original one it speak about the three dimensions, our one, six dimensions. And the original one speak about the 10 indices in our one, 22 indices. So therefore, we have uh, contextualized the world or global accepted uh, multidepreciational test into our context. I think that even though you are finding reviews that the Aswasuma covered only 53% of the poor in our program. But when we compare about the Samurdi one, as you reveal, it was 31%. So nearly about 22% increase on the verge of starting the, our process. Welfare Benefits Board Chairman further said that sole body responsible for the distribution, the welfare benefit allowances, will be the Welfare Benefits Board. Already that education ministry wanted to utilize our social registry to be published in near future uh, to uh, distribute their school uniforms and the shoes and the books. In addition to that, the, the, uh, our print media and the uh, electronic media especially wanted to utilize our social registry in order to implement their CSR programs. And uh, what is our strength is that uh, uh, we utilize the government agent and the divisional secretariat as our focal nodes in the uh, periphery. We don't have our own staff, but uh, the government is enormous uh, resources are there in, as far as human concern. So we have been deputized by the various, uh, especially public administration ministry and delegated and the assign some sort of officials to the divisional secretariat and they identified that they are carried out our tasks. In that way we have organized our institutional arrangement and um, in future there will be no better of institutions uh, doing the same thing or distributing the uh, welfare benefit uh, allowances and all institutions would be the WBB. The Welfare Benefit Board has also planned to commence the welfare payments from July onwards and that people who have been left behind can still apply for the program. The board official also added that new names will be assessed accordingly and added to the main registry. Assessment Welfare Benefit Scheme is actually the, the circular journey, but 
to start, we have to have uh, some sort of linear start, that means start and the end. So the, the, our start was there in, in last August, and by July, we anticipate to make the first payment. After that, it starts the circular journey. Then that means we open up for those who left behind to apply for the program. So that program is not calling application, but we open up our web, and web solution is there for applications, and self-enumeration and the fill in the digital form by the applicant who, by the accredited person uh, to the system. And then they automatically, they have to fill up the form and self-enumeration is going on. After that, the list of eligible persons will be included into the main registry. Stay tuned for the stock updates. Connect with SLT Rainbow Pages, your true local search. Welcome back after the break. Trading at Colombo Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 51.05 points to close at 8,818.39 and the S&P SL20 gained 19.57 points to close at 2,494.68. The turnover was 2.1 billion rupees and over 52 million shares were traded. Up next up Forex Rates. That's all we have for tonight. For this and more, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. Have a great weekend. Take care and good night.